This is Matt Hurt at Obsessive Viewer on Twitter. This is Tiny at Obsessive Tiny on the Twitters. And this is Mike White. You can find me at I am Mike White on Twitter. And this is ObsessiveViewer.com's The Obsessive Viewer Podcast. guys, welcome to the Obsessive Viewer Podcast, we're a weekly movie and TV podcast that uh, covers a specific topic, be it genre, trope, movie, or show, every episode. And this week we're talking about the Oscar, the Oscars, um, the 87th annual Oscars, is it 87th? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking about those, this is our kind of, uh, you know, wrap up wrap up episode about that. And then we're also going to dive into some potpourri, which are, is our section where we talk about whatever we're into, uh, movie and TV related. So, uh, guys, Tiny, Mike, what would you guys think of the Oscars? Sucked. <laughs> no, it was cool. It was cool. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was better than, uh, better than recent, I don't know about better than recent years. Last year was pretty good. Yeah. Um, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Pretty good. Nice. I, you know, I can't remember if I watched, oh yeah, I watched them the last couple years. Um, and I, you know, I've enjoyed them more i guess i don't know it's kind of hard to say but this year it felt kind of fresh maybe it was because of nph i just think he did a really good job um and i didn't really have that big of a stake in the in any of the nominees Mm -hmm. because actually i feel like kind of such a dick because i uh this is the third year i would have done our oscar poll our my personal oscar poll for all my friends I just completely just dropped the ball on it. Um, <laughs> like I got the I got the ballots made up and I got the Facebook group all set up and everything. And then a few weeks later, I was like, "Oh, sh- the Oscars are next week." Uh, never mind. I don't <laughs> think I actually said anything in the group. No, you didn't. I didn't. Kind of awkward. Yeah, it kind of it kind of just snuck up. Really, the Oscars did. It yeah. really did. I think it's because they released the nominations so soon now, or like so far out from the actual awards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe. I don't. I don't know if that's how they've always done it, but it feels longer now. I think it's been a. I think it's a standard like four weeks or so. Is it? I think so. It just feels longer to me. I don't know. Yeah, but uh, yes, I thought the the show itself was pretty solid. Mm-hmm. Um, NPH was, in my opinion, almost flawless. Oh yeah. As far as like landing jokes, hitting marks, uh, I thought he. I thought he was on point. Um, yeah. But some of the other stuff like that i don't know just like the the presentation of the nominees and here are the nominees just kind of mm-hmm. lackluster to me sure i don't know if that's i don't know i just didn't i didn't get much out of those there okay weren't a lot of like like scenes from the movies right oh um, yeah I, I had a i had a thought about that i'll i'll save that for a second first of all let's let's talk about how we watched them <coughs> sorry first of all let's talk about how we watched them um because usually like yeah. In years past, like the last two or three years, I've watched them at uh, my friend Yuri and John's house, um, and they were jerks, and they moved to uh, Dayton last year. So I did, I did slum it and come over to Tiny's and watch it. I mean, hey, I had such a blast coming over here and watching it with you, sitting right here. <laughs> Yikes! Yeah. And also, I had this dude in Evansville inviting me down there. <laughs> That's yeah, it. I did, and uh, <laughs> didn't that didn't work out? No, it didn't. I, I would have, I would have gladly come, but uh, I couldn't get off work, and you know, snow. Yeah, just, snow. Just reasons, man. <laughs> just <laughs> well, and you had to work the next day too, right, Mike? Yeah, but I was up. That's true. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, like we would, we would. You know, it's weird, Tony, because he invited both of us, and you're the only one that's making his ex- giving him an excuse for you not coming. <laughs> no, I mean, it's like, kind of we, weird. We would have had to get up at like six in the morning with Mike and leave, <laughs> right? <laughs> then we yeah, I guess left. I, I would have left that night probably. Yeah. I like night driving. Get listen to like, podcasts. Get home at like four a.m. Yeah, <laughs> a little rough. Yeah, yeah. If I would have, if I could have taken off work, I would have done it. Um, so, Mike, how did you watch him? Uh, well, we invited people over, um, and I watched it. We, we always do an Oscar party and we do, we dress up and I wore a tie and we do the whole bit and, uh, <laughs> and we had some people over, had some friends over. It was fun. Nice. Nice. Tiny, how did it, 
how was your perspective of the night? That's fun. Yeah, I had uh, you and my girlfriend Paige over, and your and my new girlfriend. Your the dip that you made <laughs> was amazing. Yes, I made some dip, chili con queso. Yes, it was delicious. It's thematic, given that the uh, you know most prolific winner this year was a Mexican. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was a yep. Mexican dip. Yes, no, um, not racist. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I, I'm just trying to come up with a pun for dip. It, I, I'm trying to say it was diplicious, um, but yeah. Oh boy. Wow. So I didn't win best original screenplay or anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of screenplays. Yes. That's the one like this. Usually there's like, oh man, I would have voted totally different on that category. Uh-huh. I would have had this person win or that person win. It's like four or five categories every year. This year there was only one category, only one winner that I didn't agree with. And it was uh, Best Adapted Screenplay. Yeah. Imitation um, Game? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Graham yeah. Moore won. Now, let me say, his acceptance speech was phenomenal. I left yeah, before agreed. it. <laughs> I left before all the big ones because my phone died. You and didn't I was see like, that one? I didn't. I, yeah. I That's saw. right. You didn't see that one. I didn't. Did you not, did you not know what he said? Nope. Was it something about how uh, men and women need to have the same no, wages? No, that was Patricia Arquette. Oh, okay, saw, I think you saw that one. I did. I did. I was. I was making a joke. No, he said like he was. He's a gay guy. Oh, and he was saying he was for the first time ever told people that he tried to kill himself when he was a teenager. Oh my god! Yeah, and he was yeah. like, I wouldn't be standing here if I had killed myself. And huh. he's like, if you feel out of place and depressed or weird, keep being weird and being yourself, and you might win an Oscar one day or something like that. It was like a fantastic speech. Wow. I yeah. bet Patricia really, Arquette really sounds, feels like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I didn't think that script was... I thought that script was a little messy. Um, so I would have gone with some other... So I you probably, wish he would have killed himself. Jeez. That's what time is saying. Wow. Yikes. <laughs> but this is a celebration, guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's the only one for me. Everything else, I'm very happy with the winners. Nice. Yeah, I'm. You know, I'm pretty much just okay with all the winners. I'm like, like I said, this was the first year I didn't have like a ballot that I was going through and, and checking yeah. everything, and I was just kind of like, all right, cool, drinking my drinking my, my con queso, so, <laughs> <laughs> drinking it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But uh, it, yeah. uh, back so back to the show. Sorry, mm-hmm. there were a lot of politics this year, though. There were, which was a little. It's just kind of off putting. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, some of the movies were a, a little politically. Obviously, Selma. That's you know a big deal, uh, political wise, politics wise. But um, I don't know. It just it was a little. It's like every single speech there was somebody trying to get some kind of agenda pushed, and it was yeah. it was a little off putting. Yeah. Um, but what do you expect? Yes, Mike, retort. Uh, yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, just with all of it, um, let's see, winners, winners that I like. Uh, like I said to you, I texted you right after. I'm not thrilled about Birdman winning. It's a, like I said to you, it's a capital G great movie mm-hmm. by all means. It's a great movie, mm-hmm. uh, and I really had fun watching it. But it just it didn't move me like Whiplash or Boyhood or even the Grand Budapest Hotel. And and while I get it, while I get the win, I can't help but f- feel like it's just Hollywood patting itself on the back. You know, it's a movie about, it's a movie about an ass Oscar. Uh, sorry. It's a movie about an actor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it just feels, I, I don't know. I, it was like, uh, I don't know. I can't think of a good analogy, but I, I was not super excited about it. Okay. Yeah. I can, you know, I can, I can definitely see your point and I, I absolutely. And I, I made the exact same, argument against uh 20 feet from stardom winning best doc- documentary last year right but there was something about birdman that i kind of appreciated it winning best picture because it's it's a it's a quirky and strange and kind of offbeat movie not like not like wes anderson offbeat but it's kind of like it's it's not as oscar Beatty as as uh movies tend to be in the, in that thing in that right. in that arena yeah, um, <clears throat> American Sniper, <laughs> but it's <laughs> so I kind of really appreciated that it it actually won, um, and and it is about celebrity and it is about an actor and it is about performing and everything. But there's a whole other kind of there's several layers to it that I, I can feel okay with it getting Best Picture because of those extra layers and, and the nuances of the um, main character and supporting characters too. 
Mm-hmm. Sure. Sure. Yeah, and I'm going to have to see the movies again before I can... Like, I picked Birdman, but I hadn't seen Whiplash, I haven't seen Selma, and I haven't, mm-hmm. you know, just kind of want to see some of the other ones again, but I'm I'm very happy with Birdman. That's, nice. I think that's still kind of my pick. Yeah. I don't know. I got, I got some thinking to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, something that I thought about, uh, like, this morning... Um, in the, in the shower, a shower thought that I had. Oh, uh, nice. Anyway, yeah. it's a weird response. Um, anyway, was it? <laughs> oh, nice. You were in the shower. Nice. Um, lather anyway. it on us. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Wow. Oh my god! This took a turn. This, oh, this was... episode just got weird. <laughs> oh my god! Oh wow. Okay. So anyway, um, <laughs> my thought was that. I thought it was funny, and I mean, granted, granted, I kind of ducked out before the ending of it, but the and, and early in the in the show they had the and they've done this in years previous, I think, but they they sh- had um, the young filmmakers from for the whatever yeah that they all they all submitted videos uh, short films that I think that they said were sixty seconds long. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, sixty second minute short films about wh- who inspires them or something like that. Yeah, and it's like these guys are the future of of filmmaking. Here are their names, and that's it. <laughs> uh, like when they set it up, I was like, are they going to show the the films like throughout it? Like that would be pretty cool. That would be awesome. Yeah, but no, yeah. they they didn't. Huh. Yep. Um, I just Here they are. Here weird. are some kids. Yeah, <laughs> but they had a weird. Sort of weird tribute to the sound of music. Yeah, a lot of people. A lot. I think a lot of people loved Lady Gaga because she mm-hmm. nailed it. She oh, was can we talk about that for a second? I had no idea she could sing. Please. Yeah. yeah. I had no idea she could sing. Yeah. Because that certainly wasn't Poker Face, you know, right. or whatever her other songs are. She's she's mm-hmm. great. Um, yeah. But I think people were kind of like there was like ten, fifteen minutes devoted to just sound of music. Yeah, it was kind of strange. The show. Um, I love that movie, but mm-hmm. I, I I didn't hate it or anything. But I would have rather seen the five movies shorts yeah of those people as opposed to 15 minutes of sound of music stuff yeah mm-hmm. mike lady gaga uh i thought she was fantastic but she was she's kind of been doing that stuff a lot lately like she did the thing with tony bennett and uh-huh. um so i'm i'm kind of not shocked by the reaction to it all but i'm i'm kind of chuckling really about the whole thing. i think people are flipping out for no good reason okay I, flip, I I had no idea she could sing. Right. I mean, like I'm not I'm not trying to be a, a jerk. I just right. Like I said, that that was not poker face. That was that she was almost on in, uh, Julie Andrews level. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. And she it was, was cool when they brought her out. It was yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> I want to mention, uh, li- like mentioning Lady Gaga reminded me that the the fashion thing, like I, yeah. like I posted on Facebook on my personal Facebook Facebook during the pre show. I was like, I don't get fashion or fashion is weird because <laughs> like they were like. Here's Lady Gaga with this white dress and with these red gloves, and it's a very bold move. I'm like, it's a f-ing dress, guys. <laughs> like, I don't understand it, and I understand that that's really hypocritical. Like, someone could say the same thing as like, like talking about us saying like, it's, it's a, a f-ing movie. movie guys. Yeah, exactly. It's a f-ing movie. They they lit it and they shot it. That's it. You could also say art is weird. <laughs> yeah, um, fashion's a form of art. Fashion so. is never finished. <laughs> um, but anyway, God. but what, what, what I want to what I want to get at here is that. When, when was Sunday? Sunday, I, like I was all excited and everything. Gonna watch the Oscars. I had I had like the whole day ahead of me. I was watching some Star Trek, the original series, which I'll get into in later episodes, I'm sure. And then Tiny, you were like, "Yeah, you can come here at six thirty. I was like, "Okay, cool." So I didn't even think to think about what time it was, what time the show was, and everything. Uh, Tiny, you you thought that it started at seven, buddy? I did. I I looked at the website and the Oscars said seven Eastern. Mm-hmm. And that was for the beginning of the red carpet stuff. It didn't. It did not specify that. It just said seven Eastern. It's weird. For our listeners, it started at eight thirty, which means I could have watched. <laughs> I could have watched two episodes of Star Trek, <laughs> um, and not not to not to you know rub salt in the wounds or anything like that, or, or to you know to really lash out at it. But I just happened to be on the episode with Khan. Oh, so sorry, man. It's it's all good. I watched it but yesterday. You got to see. Chloe. You got to see red carpet. You got to I see did. Chloe Kardashian and uh, yeah. Ozzy Osbourne's daughter. That talk. was that was Kelly Osbourne. Kelly, I thank you. I couldn't yeah. I disturb you know her name because uh, uh, they kept saying Kelly, and I was like, "Is that Kelly? They, What's her name?" I was trying not to listen. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I got to see ScarJo's weird necklace scarf thing. 
Yeah, I don't even remember. Yeah, you would <laughs> if you if you saw it again. <laughs> anyway, listen, I don't want to be that guy, but this is the obsessive <laughs> viewer, not obsessive fashion. So if we could, <sighs> now I need to go copyright that. Boiling on our phone. <laughs> I need to lock down that URL. Thanks, Mike. I mean, uh, I just know <laughs> you guys don't want to talk about fashion. I don't. I think show. that fashion needs to t- t- talk about itself. So anyway, <laughs> best. <laughs> I w- okay. No, like, <laughs> here's something, Mike. I want to single you out for this. Please. Um, best supporting actor. T- what was it like today? I think it was today or yesterday. I got on Facebook and I saw that Mike's mom had posted this thing that showed a picture of, of J.K. Simmons and this long, very touching thing saying like, uh, when J.K. Simmons won Best Supporting Actor, uh, my my wonderful son Mike texted me and said, I'm going to call you. And I just got off a 20-minute phone call with him now. And I'm like, Aww. Mike, that's just adorable. Yeah, I'm the best. <laughs> <laughs> I texted her right away. Like after J.K. Simmons said what he said. By the way, uh, if you don't know, he won his award uh, and he thanked his wife profusely, mm-hmm. and then thanked his kids and said they are uh, they are just a, a reflection of his wife, mm-hmm. uh, which is a fantastic compliment. And then he oh, said, yeah. um, then he thanked his parents quickly, but said, if you are lucky enough, you one of the lucky people who have one or two parents alive in this world, call them. Don't text them. Don't email them. Call them. Um, let them talk to you for as long as they want to talk. And I was like, well, shit. Watching. <laughs> I better send her a text. So I did. Nice. Uh, quickly, because, you know, I figured she was watching the show. I was watching the show. We weren't going to talk on the phone then. So right. I gave her a text, and then uh, I said I'd call her. And I did. I called her. Nice. Good job. Good for you, thanks. Mike. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Thanks for making us look bad. Yeah, right? <laughs> 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 well, just kidding that's nice man yeah right. it was. yeah um but jk simmons yeah man i, I like obviously that was a shoe in oh yeah um, it was except and, and i'm glad and i don't mm. i'm just kind of i'm just kind of uh uh stoking the fire for sake of conversation did you guys see fox catcher we saw fox catcher right no i never did get around to seeing okay because mark ruffalo is damn good in that okay. if there's anything about fox catcher that's worth seeing it's mark ruffalo hmm. and and not that i'm salty that jk simmons won because he was so deserving of it and i yeah. and i rooted for him the whole time but uh i do feel a little bad for mark ruffalo because he was he was pretty special yeah the only hmm. thing i'll say and this this should have no bearing on the uh awards but i think mark ruffalo is going to win an oscar in the next 10 years probably anyways yeah that's true. i think um, so too i don't know about jk simmons though i mean yeah I don't. I don't know. Like J.K. Simmons, older. Yeah, he's he's been more of a, a character actor kind of yeah kind of person. Right. Um, with Mark Ruffalo, was he was he nominated for the kids aren't all right or the children or whatever? I think he was. was. Okay, he didn't yeah, win the, for that. The kids aren't all right. Yeah. Yeah. The kids are all right. Kids are all right. <clears throat> That's yeah. right. Yeah. Which I'm not sure he earned that one. I don't think that movie was that good. Yeah, it was okay. Oh, I liked the movie. I just didn't think he was all that special in it. Yeah. 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 Tiny, you shared something from uh, Alan West. Huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alan West, who's a politician. Yes. Do you want to talk about that? We can. We yeah. can. It, he was basically just saying, you know. Good fodder for the podcast. It's more political than movie. But yeah. he was saying, you know, of course, the, the liberals in Hollywood snubbed the conservative film American Sniper, um, which, okay, if you want to make that statement, whatever. Uh, but the, what was really disappointing about it, he, he made this post on Facebook, and uh, he the comments were just really disappointing. Um, people were generally just making the point that because it was such a patriotic film, it should automatically have one best picture. Right. Yeah, and, that's so wrong. Yeah. Ugh. that's. Yeah. And also because it made so much money. Yeah. Like they were saying, like, well, it made so much money. Why didn't they just give it best picture? It's 50 shades of gray. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, so it's, it was just, it's just really frustrating that mm-hmm. pe- like, it, okay, if you're not a fan of movies, okay, why are you commenting on movies? You know what I mean? Like, why are you throwing your hat into the conversation if you're just not really a fan of that thing? Like, why does it matter to right. you? And it just, it just bothered me that they were, that they were commenting as an authority on something uh, when they're not even a fan of it. What's interesting to me about it is that they they cry foul of of quote unquote liberal Hollywood or whatever, um, pushing their their non America agenda or whatever. Right. Where that's basically what they're 
do, they're doing <laughs> they're, you know they they expect that their movie should be lauded upon because strictly because of its patriotism and its its political under current that's not that's not patriotic to me right it's not yeah um, and the movie was just not that good I, I thought it was pretty patriotic of hollywood to give it what eight nominations yeah or seven or however many like they they gave it way more nominations than it even deserved right in, in my in most people's opinion yeah yeah if you're just joining us we're talking about interstellar it got too many <laughs> nominations oh, <God. laughs> <laughs> One more Oscars than American Sniper did. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, the enemy and my enemy is my friend. Um, <laughs> <Jeez>. um, <laughs> but yeah, um, uh, our, our friend Fekis from uh, from the Interstellar episode, actually, good segue, Matt. <laughs> um, anyway, he posted on his Facebook page uh, a status saying, "I'm," and this is a quote. I'm tired of hearing people complain about the Oscar winners because they have never seen it or did not make as much money uh, as some other movie. Just because he you didn't see a movie does not mean it's not great. And I just realized that he's going to have something here that I'm not going to be able to pronounce. Most people have not seen Picasso's Guernica or the Sistine Chapel. But that does not mean they aren't masterpieces. Go see the movies, then make a judgment on whether or not they deserve the awards. In not to brag, but I posted a comment that got three likes. Oh, um, look out. Yeah, my, ow, ow! <laughs> <laughs> and my comment was, personally, I think the Academy messed up. Birdman was nowhere near as patriotic as American Sniper was and therefore should not have even been nominated for the United States of America's Academy Awards of America Awards. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it's... That's about right. <sighs> yeah, and then, you know, that's we don't need to really stay on this topic that much longer but it is a problem um yeah. just with the general consensus mm-hmm. so let's talk about the jokes because there was a lot of jokes that i like i don't know why i didn't expect them to really call out but i mean just from the opening opening moments where <laughs> where nph was like where we sell like what was it? Something he played. It was, it was like the first line. He's like, hello, yeah. welcome. Tonight to the 87th annual Oscars. Tonight we celebrate the best and whitest, brightest. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. you know, I was like right off the oh. bat, first line. <laughs> and then later when he goes up to David o, uh, Oyelowo, um, he's like, and everyone, everyone's clapping. He's like, oh, now you like him. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that is so great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, there were a couple of moments that were a little uncouth uh, that people were talking about the next day. I didn't, I didn't think too much of it um but when the the woman who won best documentary short was wearing had like the balls on her dress yeah. and he goes it takes a lot of balls to wear a dress like that yeah haha <laughs> funny right uh except that she had just talked about her son that committed suicide right <laughs> so it was like it was just poor timing and yeah some people kind of made a big deal but yeah i was what? getting more dip when that happened <laughs> so but yeah, yeah i yeah absolutely uh, and Sean Penn, who gave this guy a green card? Yeah, what happened with that? I don't know. That I missed was... that one. Well, I read today that um, Inyaritu and Sean Penn are old friends. They did the movie Twenty One Grams together right. a right. while ago, and the, it, this is what it was: it was Sean Penn breaking his balls, which oh. is what guys do to each other. That's what <laughs> it was. Now I understand why people misinterpreted it. You know, not everyone right. knows that they're buddies, right? Um, it 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 was a lighthearted joke, right? I I really don't. Sean Penn's not xenophobic, right? Um, yeah. you're yeah. just breaking balls. He was Tiny, you're a ball. ass. Thank you, yeah. Matt. Love you too, buddy. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm. This is me breaking character from the podcast. I'm just saying you're. Ass. You want to throw down? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you <f-ing> kill me. <laughs> Love you too, buddy. <laughs> so yeah, I just anyway. don't. I don't. I think people. It was just misinterpreted. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, and of course it doesn't bother me and and I, I think there's a bit of misinterpretation going on but um in a night where people are are for the most part pretty careful with their words and kind mm-hmm. of uh you know you mentioned the the uh political stuff that happened um throughout the night it, it was just it, it didn't really have a place. Yeah. It was too much. Yeah. I mean yeah. that's that's all that always happens in the Oscars. Someone tries to work their cause in into their speeches. Uh, Jared Leto did it last year with uh, Argentinians. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, and you know it happens every year, but it was like every other speech. And it's yeah, and it really shows that how how 
I mean, yeah, it's a platform that they have, you know, a national audience and everything. But, I mean, I didn't remember that Jared Leto said that. Yeah. <laughs> so you just said that. Um, right. That reminds me, like, one of my biggest problems with the Oscars themselves is it's just it's it's stuffy. It's it's very like political and very like gallant. Yeah. Uh, let's say let's talk about Patricia Arquette and and equality for women and free and uh, equal pay for women. 100% agree, of mm-hmm. course, right? Yeah. But who is she? Right. To say, right? I, yeah. Is she, like, do... I know that we look to celebrities uh, and faces to to kind of, like, pave the way for these sorts of things and, and lead the way and show us how to do certain things, but she makes a f- ton of money, yeah. right? <laughs> I, I don't know. I Like, have your... Have your ideals and and stick to your guns and say what you want to say, but I just I would rather hear that kind of thing from somebody else, somebody from the middle class who is actually suffering from this sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. or like use a different venue for it, uh, because I mean she has a very good way to um, a really good platform from which to talk about this because her character in Boyhood, it could she could spin it as the embodiment of that of the equality problems and all that stuff like i mean her character in boyhood is a very self-sufficient single mother who's who's trying to raise her kids and everything and she could use that in in um as a segue as a segue or or in like the press yeah for saying like okay well this is what spoke to me about the role stuff just stuff like that yeah i mean to use the national stage like that it's like people just kind of don't really it has an adverse effect to what they think that they're going to do it's right. a, it's selfish mm-hmm. because it's she she's just capitalizing on the fact that eyes are on her at that moment. Yeah. Whereas like Emma Watson has become synonymous with women's rights movements, mm-hmm. but that's because uh, she was chosen. I believe she's a UN ambassador for women's rights around the world, something like that. Mm-hmm. She has she was like elected by a group of people to and to, like do that Mm -hmm. and you know they probably chose her because she's intelligent and she's really famous (laughs) and a lot of people look at her but that's different you know what i mean like she's that's that's a good case of using your fame right the fact that eyes are on you to do that because that's it's it's contextualized proper properly as opposed to this is just supposed to be about movies you know right yeah so (laughs) it's a little frustrating but yeah yeah most people you know i don't know and i don't i I I don't want to come off as misogynistic at all. I I don't mean to sound that way, and uh, I don't know. Maybe she probably doesn't get paid as much as men do. And and I said in the last podcast we talked about the how uh, um, minorities and women are misrepresented or not represented well enough in movies. I, right. I I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. It's just uh, something about it bugged me because she she's richer than all the women I know. <laughs> right. <laughs> You know, we were just, we just picked that one as an example. That yeah. wasn't, yeah. you know, it wasn't. Yeah. So segue and a horrible, horrible segue to this. But in the pre-show for it, they had a tiny. I don't think you were in the room for this, but me and me and Paige uh, saw it. There was a moment where they were interviewing Chris Evans, like before the show. Oh yeah, yeah, and he was there with a woman. <laughs> And then <laughs> it was really funny because the woman was like the woman interviewing was like, oh, hey, and who's here or whatever. And he's like, I just want to make it. Cl- she's an old friend. She's not my date. She's not my date. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, like me. and Ouch. Yeah. Like me and me and Tiny's girlfriend were, were just saying like she just got friend zoned so hard on national television. <laughs> well, is he married? No. I don't know. But no, probably not. No. There, I remember there was an article or something like some some interviewer from. Some magazine interviewed him and like claimed that he got drunk and tried to hit on her and tried to invite her back to his room and everything. And I'm just like, I think I made the comment and I I don't have the beers in me. At the, I didn't have the beers in me at the time to defend myself, but I think I said that yeah, I would let him impregnate me. <laughs> um, okay, okay, yeah. that's okay. straight. Hey, Kevin America, man, science. Yeah, science. Um, yeah. Does he look? This is we are we are getting way gossipy, but mm-hmm. does he look like slim down? Uh, I don't know. I wasn't paying close enough attention. I was just looking at his beard. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Tiny, your thoughts on Tim McGraw? Yeah, he looked a little. <laughs> he looked a little peaked. Yeah. I I commented on that. Right. Yeah. Do you want to expand on that at all? No. Okay. Yeah. Me neither. 
So Lonely Island and Tegan and Sarah playing. It's, 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 <laughs> everything is awesome. Uh, I really. I didn't the think that was very awesome. Really, you didn't think so? It was. Uh, the performance was cool. It didn't sound very good. Yeah. 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 The song doesn't sound very good. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. yeah. It it didn't have that production. Yeah. I, I hadn't heard the uh, the song they won for best original song, uh, "Glory" by mm-hmm. John Legend and Common. Uh, I hadn't heard it before, and so to see it in that performance for the first time, that was, man, that song is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, that I got a little choked up. Mm. I was almost Chris Pine. I was just going <laughs> to comment on that. <laughs> um, Captain that, Kirk. That, I'm so glad that won, because that was a fantastic song. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, after, before that, they had um, the the performance, for, the Tim McGraw performing that song mm-hmm. that they, they led into it saying that, this guy had Alzheimer's and he re- recorded the song as like his last memory to his, to his family and all that stuff. And like after that, and then, and then hearing glory, I was like, okay, I know everyone's pulling for the Lego movie cause they got snubbed and everything, but the Academy would be just big dicks if they didn't <laughs> give it to one of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, true. Yeah. But so I'm happy with that category. Yeah, me too. Um, sound mixing and sound editing, which did, did it's exactly somewhere? how I called it. Jordan fades back, swish, and that's the game. <laughs> uh, I felt good about that one. <laughs> that was really Sorry. good. I, 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 that's, I take pride in my uh, sound editing and mixing acumen. <laughs> <laughs> when you said Jordan, I immediately I was like, wait, what? <laughs> it's a nineties Bulls reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. <laughs> Interstellar didn't get any one of those, right? No. I didn't think so. No. They only got visual effects. Visual effects. Yeah. yeah. Um every time that Interstellar because Interstellar was nominated for those two visual effects and score, and I think that's it. Mm-hmm. Maybe production design. But every time that they read the name for it, I got like really excited for best original score because I really want that score wanted that score to win. Yeah. Um when it didn't win, I was just like, Alright, cool. Maybe I can stop talking about this movie now. <laughs> Any other standouts? Hmm. The opening and not really, and that's kind of my thing about this Oscars. There's I there's not a whole lot to complain about. I thought uh what uh NPH was significantly above average, but not the mm. best. It was just it was just pretty good. Yeah. Which is a shame because I thought movies the movies this year were were um fantastic. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's – I don't know what it is, but it may be just because I was really young at this point and I didn't really – I didn't have the same level of receptiveness or, or thought process when watching movies or anything. But I just remember like way back when like Billy Crystal was hosting, I, those were phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't think the Oscars have really matched that since – that era. I don't know. Ellen last year. Yeah, Ellen was, was good. She's probably the best I've seen. Yeah. yeah. Um, what we needed was the we needed to see J Law fall down. For the third time? In yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't even think she was there. So yeah, the in I, I had a thought earlier and I I didn't I don't think I actually brought it up, but my problem with, with the Oscars being this whole elegant, gallant event and very, very serious I was listening to the Gillian Gillian Anderson Gillian Anderson Nerdist episode um, from X Files. Mm-hmm. She was talking about how the Golden Globes were so much more fun because or were always so much more fun because the Golden Globes were at dinner and everyone was drunk and it was very laid back and everything. Mm-hmm. So I think they really need to get everyone drunk for the Oscars because <laughs> um, it is very everybody self- take yeah but they take themselves so seriously yeah, yeah yeah. So I need to I need to start watching the Golden Globes really instead yeah. Do you not? You don't watch the Golden Globes? I don't. You know, with with award shows and stuff, I don't really watch much of much of anything live. Anyway, uh, the Oscars, I make a point just because the last few years I've done the Oscar pool. So sorry, guys, that I dropped the ball. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Emmys, Golden Globes, you usually just follow along online hmm. and right. uh, stuff. Okay. Uh, how was Eddie Redmayne's uh, acceptance speech? It was cute. It was. <laughs> it was really cute. Nice. He was uh the kind of the, the 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 classic trope of just totally surprised and blown away, I think. Yeah. And, uh in awe of the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, tomorrow, as of this recording, tomorrow I have my post for the, my review of the theory of everything going up. Nice. Which I remember when the when the nominations came out, I I think I said it on the podcast too. I was like, I'm gonna re- I'm gonna review every Oscar, every best uh, uh, picture nominee. Yes, you did. Yep. Uh, it didn't really work out. <laughs> yeah, I remember um, when you said that. Yeah. All those times. Oh, well. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All those times. Yeah. Um. I'm going through some stuff. Or what is the what is the uh, John Goodman line from Community? I'm going through some stuff. I'm going I through think. some stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, final thoughts on the Oscars because we can move on to potpourri here in a bit. I was happy with them. Yeah, pretty happy with them. The show and everything. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. Phenomenal dip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike, Can't really yeah. complain. Nice. Good. Good. So, uh, real quick, who? <laughs> first of all, okay, okay, really, really fast. John Travolta, that whole that whole thing. Yes. Yeah. Um, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Yeah. Uh, what his yeah. weird, creepy awkwardness. That and just the how they yeah. poked fun at the whole Adele Dazim thing. That was funny. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, so many pictures online of just him being really weird. Yeah. Uh, the one with Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. That's so creepy. It's so. Yeah. Uh, when did he become a creep? I didn't know he was a creep. Uh, One word for you, Scientology. Scientology, yeah. yeah. And he also, he I has... think you know. I don't mean to be unsensitive, but like when his son died, he hasn't really done anything. Yeah. Of note since right. his son died, I think he. I don't know. Did he kind of lo- lose it? Maybe lose more. But I, I think he lost yeah. more because I mean I remember vaguely remember there being stories about how his son, like his son, had some kind of develop, developmental issues. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And like they, because of Scientology, they just didn't get proper care for him right. at all. Gotcha. Um, but that's more the obsessive gossip than anything else. Yeah. Another URL I'm going to have to lock down. <laughs> obsessive gossip. Yeah. Um, <laughs> obsessive, obsessive uprocks. So, <laughs> yes. So good. We liked the Oscars. Fine enough. I'll do a, a pool next year, I think. Maybe. If, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So why don't we go into some potpourri then? Totes. Yes. Do it. Uh, of course, like I said at the top of the episode, this is the section of the podcast where we talk about pretty much anything we want as long as it smells good is what we usually say about it, anything movie and TV related. And we have a, we have a bit of time, so let's just, let's just go around the table, and well, the proverbial table, mm-hmm. and go through it. Uh, Tiny, I know you're chopping at the bit to talk about a certain thing that you watched. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Black Mirror? Oh, God. Uh <laughs> Literally JK. 15 minutes before we started recording, I, f- I finished watching Whiplash. J.K. Simmons. <laughs> uh, holy shit, it's good. So good. I forgot until this moment that I wanted to start the episode with. All right, so we're talking about... Um, oh, and that's a spoiler. Anyway, yeah, so tell me what you thought about it. That was a disaster. <laughs> was I'll really tell you good. off the air. <laughs> um, well, you guys have talked about it so much over the past couple episodes. I really just kind of echo what you guys said. Uh, mm-hmm. I think Mike's analogy that it's like the entire movie is like a really tight jazz song is a perfect analogy. Um, mm. That's that's how it felt. Um, J.K. Simmons was just phenomenal. Um, I love the progression of Miles Teller's character. Um, I don't know, just kind of the the path he took was really satisfying. Um, and the ending, no spoilers or anything, but I was on the edge of my seat sweating just from watching it. It was yeah, unbelievably fantastic ending. Uh, really great movie. Mm. Um, I, I'm going to have to see it again and, um, Birdman to truly decide if, <laughs> if right. Birdman is my official pick for movie for best picture at the mm. Oscars. I don't know about movie. I'm going to have to look at my top 10 again, obviously. Right. Um, but yeah, it's I, I don't know if I can decide. I want to see both of them again and some other stuff. Yeah, and yeah. they're so worth seeing. Again. Oh, absolutely! I'm, I'm going to buy Whiplash. Oh yeah. yeah, me too. It um came out today. Yeah, it as did. of this recording, that's how I watched it. I watched yeah. it on VOD. Which nice. I want to like. I'm kind of sad that you didn't get a chance to see it in the theater because man, that's a really good theater experience. I can the, imagine the sound just yeah. Ah, it's so great. Yeah, yeah. Oh well. Yep. So Mike, uh, what what about you? What do you got for us? Um, I have a couple actually, if you nice. guys don't mind yeah. Uh, yeah. indulging me. Do you want to do one um, and then we'll, we, we'll keep going? Yeah, around. I guess we can come okay. around. I, uh, I saw Kingsman, the secret service. Me too. Nice. I haven't seen it. Okay. So we'll try to, 
we'll try to stay spoiler free, of course. Right. It was so much fun. Yeah. It was so the movie I wanted it to be. Um, better, I think, than than the trailers even make it out to be. I remember going in and thinking uh, the the kid, the um, one of the leads, not Colin Firth. Um, his character's name is Eggsy. I, like I thought he was going to be douchey the whole time, and I was yeah. a little worried he was going to just be too too much that hooligan character. Um, but he's really has a lot of incredibly redeeming scenes. Um, Colin Firth is amazing. I mean, he, he you know he's kind of the um, the like the loser boyfriend in most movies, and mm-hmm. um, was really like out of out of his comfort zone. But he he just nailed it there. I, I wish we could talk more about it because I kind of want to talk about the movie, uh, uh, the violence in it, mm-hmm. and kind of see what you guys think. But I just I really love the movie. It's it, it's early. It's only February, but it's it's my favorite movie of 2015 so far. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Also. Um... The uh, yeah, um, I yeah I agree with the the main character Eggsy. I don't recall the actor's name. Um, he he was really surprisingly genuine throughout it. Yes, I was expecting douchiness as well with the uh, the snapback hat and uh, whatever. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, he he was really genuine and likable. Um, mm-hmm. Truly an underdog, likable character, and uh, I enjoyed it. I didn't realize it was based on a comic. Yeah, it is, and that was. I was a little apprehensive about the movie going in because I did not like the comic. It was uh, mm-hmm. in the comics, Eggsy, the the main character, is actually the nephew of of Colin Firth's character, uh, and they have different names and just kind of little tweaks here and there. It's a little, believe it or not, tiny. It's a little more cynical even than the movie is. Wow. Uh, despite despite how dark the movie kind of gets at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, same same kind of basic plot, but I, I love the movie so much more. In fact, I, I quit watch, I quit uh, reading the comics about a little less than halfway through. Oh, okay, yeah, it, it felt like a comic book in a in a really really quality way. I just I just want Matthew Vaughn to do everything, <laughs> <laughs> everything. He's great. So I guess that brings it to me, and I I, re- I think I referenced it earlier. I don't remember if we were recording or not, but I've been watching Star Trek. Which I'm, and I don't, I, you know, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say what I'm planning to do with it because I don't want to jinx it for the site or anything. But I've been watching Star Trek a lot, and I'm about 26 episodes into the first season, which wow. is 30 episodes. And this is, this is what my completionist mind is so dead set on watching everything that, I mean, I have a list of each series, each movie, where they, where they, where they are chronologically. And there's, there's like six different TV series. There's like 12 or 13 movies. And it's just, it's a daunting, daunting task. Mm-hmm. But man, I'm really enjoying it. Nice. Um, That's good. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> That's good. it's so much fun. And like, that was one of my main concerns going in is that like, Oh, well I'll, maybe I won't like it, but it's, <sighs> I don't want to say it's better than star Wars. <laughs> Oh, shut up. <laughs> mm. Oh, stop it. No, uh, I do want to point out, I didn't mention this. I'm, I've been meaning to put this on the on the Facebook page, but there was... <laughs> what was it? What were we talking about on the, on the, in the pod chat? We were talking about how the, there was puff pieces about, uh, what's it called? About, about Star Wars mm-hmm. and how it's just like non-news and n- media outlets need to stop right now. <laughs> Because yeah. I, because there, okay, there's there was a post about how the lightsabers in uh, there was a, on a reputable website. There was a post saying, "Did the uh, did an Apple uh, iPhone designer it contribute to the the lightsabers in the Force Awakens?" And I'm like, first of all, I'm like lightsabers because we've only seen one, <laughs> and two was the article was just total clickbait like it was it was so infuriating because at the end of it it was like so no he didn't do that because it's basically boils down to the guy was at a party where jj abrams was and they may have talked or they had a conversation Mm -hmm. and it may have led to the the lightsabers and and uh the force awakens and like it's it's just such a non 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 story so i went on a tirade about it in the pod chat and then (laughs) 
And then I ended it with, uh, by saying, <clears throat> basically what I'm trying to say about this whole lightsaber thing is that Star Trek is better than, is better. And phaser guns are more effective weapons than lightsabers. Also that Spock is a better character than Yoda and Obi-Wan. And William Shatner is a more talented actor than Harrison Ford. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And and you guys didn't really respond to it. You, this... I won't hear it, and I won't respond to it. <laughs> <laughs> but what's funny is I was telling a coworker about that. And then she was like, uh, she she said, "Oh, I agreed with you up until uh, Harrison Ford and and William Shatner." I was like, "Wait, you really think phasers are better than lightsabers?" <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, back to my point. I mean, I'm really liking Star Trek, and I think that part of it is. I won't say it's better than Star Wars because they are vastly, vastly different things. Yeah, yeah I was um, gonna say. I'm sorry to interrupt. That's, oh no, that's, that's kind of what I was gonna say. Yeah, I, your joke was hilarious for sure. <laughs> but uh, I kind of like when anybody really tries to bait me into that conversation, I, <laughs> I check out very quickly. Yeah, um, because they're so they're so different. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. It's it's Star Wars is obviously mostly movies i mean it's it's a movie franchise mm. and it's more fantasy than i, I mean they're just so different i, I yeah. could go on forever so i'm i, I don't know they, yeah I, I in fact mostly from my experience the only people who compare the two are not really f- the fans of i no no true and and I want to reinforce. I have been just just breaking your guys's balls. Yeah, I've been Sean Penning your guys's Inuitus. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but there is. I mean, you know, they're so starkly different. And I don't want anyone like if anyone is just an avid Star Wars fan, I don't want them to like. Like there are some people who will be like, oh well, no, Star Trek is. Star Trek isn't for me or whatever. And I think part of the reason why I'm connecting to Star Trek so much is that I've had such a hard time getting into Star Wars just because I think what I've – my expectations for Star Wars like from from an early age is I, I thought it would be more sci-fi oriented rather than fantasy and, and more stuff like that. Like Star Trek is more deeply rooted in like sci-fi and hard sci-fi and, right. and I'm just – I'm really, really enjoying it. Uh, and it sucks because, I mean, we just found out that the, uh, Leonard Nimoy is in the hospital, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, man, he, like, he is incredible in it. Oh, yeah. He's, in, in watching the original series, I keep thinking back to uh, the J.J. Abrams movies because those, those are my only reference point for Star Trek. Mm-hmm. And just the, I mean, the the casting. Yeah is so on point it's I, so anyway in short my my sec, sec, segment is getting really long um <laughs> it's it's a lot of fun i'm really enjoying star trek uh it's a vast vast thing that i'm undergoing for it but i'm really excited for it and i've heard that season two apparently uh the way that my coworker describes it season two is when william shatner apparently has like a stroke not not literally but it seems like it so that makes me a little nervous because that's when because while watching it, I keep I keep in mind all of the parodies and stuff about how he's he's very, uh, Mister Spock, <laughs> I, like very mm-hmm. very deliberate and and pausy, I guess. Right. Um. But it, watching the first season, he's very he's actually solid. Like he's actually yeah. pretty damn good. Hmm. But I guess he loses his way. <laughs> um. So yeah. Uh. Enough about Star Trek. Uh. Better than Star Wars. Tiny. <laughs> What's next? <laughs> We uh, by the way we did respond to the joke you made in the the podcast. You, you did, yeah. We responded by not defriending you. Right, uh, that was our response. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. So my 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 cursor was hovering over the defriend button. So you know, if you guys watched Black Mirror, you would know that <laughs> oh my you could have blocked me, and it would be like blocking me in the Christmas special. Go ahead, Tiny. What's Hashtag your next one? Hashtag unfriending. <laughs> Anyways, uh, my second one is. Uh, Sorry to stick to the Oscars, but uh, I watched Citizen Four, which won the Oscar for nice. Best Documentary Feature. Um, it's so good, guys. I uh, really loved it. I'm glad it won, even though I haven't seen the other ones. Um, <laughs> sorry to say that. Uh, it, it's just so fascinating to look into this. This is one of the biggest, one of the biggest stories of the last decade. Right. Um, well, Snowden. I mean, it, ha- it happened during this decade. Right. 
the 2010s. Anyways, um, or teens. I'm I'm all over the place. Yeah. <sighs> so are. this was a massive story. <laughs> I wish I could say it's the biggest story of the century, but um, and it's just to see it. You're literally watching it unfold. You're watching mm-hmm. the journalists who broke this story interview Edward Snowden in his hotel room in Hong Kong. Oh wow! Uh, it's just it's just amazing to see it unfold and the way it progresses and like as I was watching this I was thinking like this is I, I I was thinking Edward Snowden is probably one of the most recognizable names in the world because mm-hmm. you're talking about a story that affects almost the entire world because the NSA was spying on foreign governments all over the country mm-hmm. um or all over the world, right. um, so it it just affects so many people all around the world. And it's I would say besides Barack Obama, at 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 his peak, Edward Snowden was probably one of the most famous people in the world. Wow! Um, and just to, again, just to see it unfold, the, this this amazing story unfold with four people in a hotel room, three people listening to a nerdy guy sit on a bed <laughs> and talk about his job. That's what broke the story. It's just really interesting, interesting. to watch it. Um, and then once they start releasing these these various publications, uh, Glenn Greenwald was the journalist. Um, as that unfolds, he has to, Edward Snowden has to move because they found out where he is, um, and like just just the the change up in the movie at that point, it's just really interesting to see what happens with the characters, quote unquote. Um, just to see how their attitudes change and how they realize how big this is and how the world is really accepting it. Um, it's just such a great documentary. It's, it's just, you, you don't normally get this much information out of big stories like this. Nice. Um, you don't get to see them unfold. You don't get to witness them unfold. And that's what you get to see in this, this documentary. And it's just really incredible. Okay. Yeah. Um, question. For someone who's really only seen the newsroom season three, and that's their only <laughs> reference point for Edward Snowden. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how is it for like a like, oh, this is what's going on. This is what happened. This is why it's important. This is why you should do that. That's one of the issues with it. Okay. Um, it The movie plays with the assumption that the audience knows a lot about Edward Snowden. Okay. So if people didn't know much about him and thought that he was a really old guy that was part of NSA, yeah. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> no. Um, okay. So, that, so that's sort of. Uh, I think. They, I think they should have maybe built on that a little more, mm-hmm. um, but can't fault them for it too much. Um, and also the way that it, the, their their um, transitions between moments is kind of, just kind of strange okay. for me. But it, it, I still think it totally deserved the Oscar. Nice. Um, it's just really great. I. You know, I'm biased because I love documentaries. So right, I'm how pretty... does it compare with the seventy you watched last year? <laughs> Eighty-one. <laughs> Eighty-one. <laughs> you. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, oh. It would. It would. It would be in the top ten of those eighty-one. Oh, very. Without nice. question. Yeah. Um, yeah. M- Mike, what do you think about Snowden? I know very little, and I'm just yes, gonna man. be quiet about it so i don't make myself sound stupid i thought that this weekend we might be snowed in all right so my (sighs) go ahead mike (laughs) for Um, our listeners it's you always have such interesting things to talk about but i want to talk about the thing that's kind of making its way around the internet today uh is this power rangers yeah short film i didn't watch it oh Oh, matt Matt. i i didn't have time i had time you had 15 minutes yeah (laughs) Ah, so paint me a word picture, guys. Oh, it's so cool. It's so fun. Yeah. Um, so it's in the future, right? They're all adults and they're kind of um they all have a chip on their shoulder about how they were made as kids to save the world and so in the future machines take over and I I think it's Rocky, like uh James Vanderbeek plays Rocky, the the second Red Ranger. Is that correct? Um Tiny? I don't know. I can't. I, I almost want to say, oh yeah, Jason was the first one, right? Jason was the first one, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then and I think so, right. and so he plays, uh, he plays Rocky the second, the second Red Ranger, and uh, Katie Sackhoff is the Pink Ranger. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's basically there is someone. Uh, it's so short, so it's hard to <laughs> talk about it without spoiling. Right. Um, 
there's someone trying to off Rangers. And yeah. it's basically just about that. And so <laughs> that's um, so cool. It is it is really cool. And we get a and we get a good fight scene mm-hmm. uh with one of the Rangers in costume and um just little Easter eggs and nice. it was it was really, really fun. Yeah. They they kinda pay they kinda pay homage to um certain real life things like um the the character of Billy in the future is gay, like like uh David <laughs> Yost is in real life. Um they they're really respectful to Trini mm-hmm. who who died uh in real life. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um it was just it's good. It's fun. It's so fun. Tiny, what'd you think about it? Oh, I loved it. Um I uh, just to tell you to put it in context, I watched it at work at my desk. <laughs> uh yeah. which is in the lobby of a big office building and it's really unprofessional to do that. Right. Um I don't usually do that. I don't usually watch videos at work. Um so He's that, winking at me. That's weird. No, I'm not. No. I'll, I'll go well, ahead. Why are you I'll. taking your pants off? With? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't. That's that, that'll give you an indicator of how great it was. I couldn't turn it off. Uh, yeah, it was just so much fun. And I, I haven't seen anything Power Rangers related since I was 11, probably. Keep it that way, man. <laughs> it's so yeah. awful. But just yeah. I, I was just hit with waves of nostalgia. And, um, it, and then after that wore off, I was like, this is actually really cool. Nice. Um, and I, I'm a uh, proud fan of Katie Sackhoff. Matt doesn't like her. I, I'm, you know, I'm planning because uh, this whole year I'm planning a focused viewing of star, uh, uh, sci-fi stuff. So I think I'm going to put in uh, Battlestar Galactica. In Frack, there. yeah, you are. Yeah. So uh, I, I started it a while ago, but I, n- I never really continued it. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll maybe that'll sway me. Uh, she's, she seems like such an awesome person, yeah. judging from her podcast appearances. Mm-hmm. But I, something about her, I just can't really connect with her at an actress level. Mm-hmm. What else? Um, wow. What, yeah. uh, what it makes me worry about is that um, you, we know there's a new movie coming up coming out. Uh, and because of this short film, I think people oh, are yeah. going to expect that uh, the movie is going to be something like this. I completely you, forgot that they were making a new movie. Me yeah. Too. Do you remember oh. years back when uh, a couple years back when the the uh, um, the Mortal Kombat short came yeah. out? Yeah. And then they announced that there was going to be the the short film series, mm-hmm. and w- it was just trash. Uh, um, I never followed it, through so with that. that was kind of a bad reaction to that, and everybody thought that it was going to be a real movie. Like, I don't know. It, it uh, not that whoever made that short is trying to dupe people into thinking that there's going to be a Power Rangers movie that's based on this short. But I always, I always, <laughs> I always hate having to like explain to people, no, they're not making right. a movie about that. That just happened. Yeah, it was cool. You know, that was going to be my next question. Tiny, what were you going to say? The, well, the director came out and said I, the, the article of it where I saw them, the, the short, um, they had some quotes from the director and he said he is not going to make a feature movie. And gotcha. he said that he was approached by the studios to make, they gave him like a $200 million budget to make a PG 13 Power Ranger movie. Uh-huh. And he turned them down and he, he said in, he never blatantly said it, but he, I, I took it, you know, as him saying the studio just wants to ruin the franchise. Uh, by making it PG-13 and trying to keep it all kid-friendly and cute and stuff like that. And he just he was just like, it just doesn't interest me to, to do that. So I decided to do this instead. Hmm. Uh, and I, I'm not going to – he's like, they're not going to – I'm not going to do a movie if they're going to have those stipulations on it. Um, yeah. yeah. It was Which pretty great you, to hear. Yeah, you can't blame either party. <laughs> right. True, true. Um, quick plug. I wrote a piece for House of Geekery like a couple years ago that was uh, – Back when Christopher Nolan was still in my good graces, uh, it was like uh, Christopher Nolan's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, like my pitch for him to make it or something. It was like a very gritty interpretation of it. Um, so I have to reread that after I after I watch the short. But how, like, going through, I, I'm being exposed to more media and everything, like like more comics, I guess, to an extent. But how would you guys feel about them making like a comic, a short lived comic out of this short? It sounds like it'd be kind of interesting to pursue that way. I, I'd I'd buy the first issue, yeah, yeah. and just see what see where it goes. Nice. Yeah. I'd, I'd give it a shot. I mean, I kind of 
<laughs> you you I have more first issues than I would care to admit right now. <laughs> so yeah, of course I'd buy the first yeah. issue. I just I don't think it would be very good. Like the new Mortal right. Kombat comic, which is based on the on the new game, is also not very good. Really? Mm-hmm. That's bad. That sucks. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. That happens. There's good stuff to read out there. Yeah. Like the Star Trek and uh Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Crossover. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, the first issue was okay. But I guess does that bring you to me? It's you. Yep. Yeah. Um I wanna kinda switch gears a little bit and talk about how I've been kind of forced into being a cord cutter, I guess, to an extent. Um, I haven't had I haven't had like a cable box in my room for a long time, but I've been relying on uh, uh, Netflix and, and my PS3 to watch stuff. And recently, I I think I've talked about this before, but my PS3 messed up, and it led to me getting like my PS3 like crashed, so it led to me getting a Chromecast, which made, which I streamed Netflix from my tablet to my TV, which worked. Beautifully. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's, I'm really, really enjoying that. And it led to me buying, uh, subscribing to Hulu Plus. So now I have Hulu Plus, Netflix, and Amazon Prime, which Amazon Prime I can't get to unless my PS3 is working because for some reason Amazon doesn't have an app that will go onto an Android tablet to stream to, to, a, to a Chromecast. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I think it's because, I think it's because they have their Fire TV stick right. thing. And they have their, uh, 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 tablets. Yeah, yeah, the Kindle, Kindle Fire. tablets. Yeah, so. yeah, it's uh, I, it's asinine to me. Can you stream it from a web browser? I, you know, that's the thing. I, I can, but for some reason, my MacBook Pro, like, is one of like uh, for some reason, it's not compatible with with Chromecast. Like, I can't get a Chromecast app huh. to download apps. Like, I can't get like an Amazon app or whatever to to or like I can't watch. The only way I can stream from my laptop to my TV to my Chromecast is through the Chrome app, like or the Chrome uh, browser. So I can. I oh, can, okay. Yeah, and, it, and that's a little laggy, and it's is just it? not optimal. Optimal to me. That's too bad. Yeah, but today I re like I re completely rebooted my PS3 to factory settings, which wasn't a big loss to me because I didn't have anything on my PS3, yeah. <laughs> uh, game related at least, because I'd only had it for like a year. But. I got Amazon, so and I was hoping that I would be able to finish. Like, I I didn't get a chance to watch it, but I just wanted to give like a teaser that there is a Amazon. What Amazon Prime does is they have their their pilot season. They have pilots for original programs that they put out. Um, the just the pilot episodes that you can watch, and then you can you know go from there. Well, they announced that they have a crop of shows from those pilots that have been picked up for a full season, and one of them in particular sounds so good. Hmm. It's uh, called The Man in the High Castle. Have you guys heard about this? No. No. It's an adaptation of a Philip K. Dick novel Ooh. about an alternate history where uh, instead of us losing, in- instead of us winning World War II, mm-hmm. we lost. And in the, uh, uh, like, like, I think Japan, Japan and Germany took us over or whatever. The Axis powers. The Axis powers. Uh, I can't remember if it was just Germany, but any, mm-hmm. I think the Axis powers just took us over and, and the United States is under their control. Wow. And, uh, and, and I've only seen a clip from it and I've heard about, I've heard them talk about it on slash Filmcast, but it sounds like tiny. It sounds right up your Oh, alley. I'm intrigued right now. Yeah. 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 And I'm so happy that I got a full season order, but there was a clip from, um, uh, and, and it, I guess it goes into kind of, um, like what happens when there's a void. Cause, cause now, I guess Hitler is like the ruler of the world because he won. Right. Um, so, but he's aged, aging now. I don't know what, what time period it is, but he's like old and there's going to, there's about to be a vacuum of power. So the clip that I saw showed this, there was this woman in like kind of, kind of like a, a basement looking thing watching proje- a projector uh, on a sheet. And I don't think this is a spoiler. It's part of the promotional clip or whatever. But she's watching this footage. That's footage of us winning the war, of us, of of the United States winning the war. And like her husband or whoever comes down, she's he's like, oh yeah, I've heard that the, this guy, the the man in the high castle, is who they call him. They, he makes these he makes these propaganda pieces. Oh wow. And uh, and she's like, no, it's real. We we really we really won. It's not real. It's this isn't how it's supposed to be or whatever. He's like, no, no, no. They're gonna you. You need to destroy this um, because they're gonna they're gonna you know kill you for it or whatever. Right. And I like I'm I'm so intrigued at the premise, and I promise that next next episode it might be my potpourri that 
uh, pilot episode. But if you have Amazon Prime, it is on Amazon Prime. The first episode is, cool. and it was picked up for a series order, a season, a season order, which uh, was one of the things I was kind of hesitant about about the whole pilot thing. Yeah, because uh, I mean, who wants to watch just one episode and then it not go anywhere? <laughs> right. Um, so That's yeah, cool. Yeah, Man in the High Thanks. Castle. Uh, do we want to do one more quick, quick round? I don't really have anything else. Anything? No. Mike, you got anything? Um, I would say that uh, Amanda watched Snowpiercer and liked it, and I couldn't believe that she liked it. Nice. Wow. Yeah. I saw your post on Facebook. Yep. Yeah. She stayed awake the whole time. Very <laughs> nice. That makes you know, one of one of us, <laughs> I, <laughs> or three of us, three I of guess. Us, yeah. yeah. I'm, what I'm getting at is I could I had trouble staying awake. Right. Yeah. I need no, to watch it again. Yeah. Um. Ah, this doesn't really fall on, under this, but I'm I'm excited for the Expanse. I've talked about it a lot. Uh-huh. The Leviathan Wakes is the book that it's based on. Uh, the first book of the series that it's based on. But it, the the show is going to be on uh, sci-fi, and I'm kind of getting to the point where. Like I, I, I really like doing adaptations and remakes on the site and everything, but I'm getting the sense that maybe I shouldn't do those anymore <laughs> because reading the book is such a different experience than watching the movie or TV show, and it's so hard to – like there was a point in, in Leviathan Wakes, the first book of the Expanse series, that at the end of it, I was just thinking – and this is may, maybe a reflection of how I read books, but all I was thinking was, oh, yeah, they're going to have to speed this up for, for the show <laughs> – um, and it's actually one of the complaints that I have in the review that I'm going to have posted on Obsessive Book Nerd is that it's, there's not a really a time ticking time aspect to it. And, and I can just see them amplifying it for, for TV. And I mean, that's just how my brain works. And I don't like comparing them that way. Um, I don't know. I'm just rambling now. <laughs> but the Expanse series is good. It's a good series of books if you're into that. I like the trailer for it. Yeah. Um, and then also, uh, and it may be because I've, I've been – exposing my nephew to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and he's liking the new one. Um, but I keep picturing like the, um, the character that Thomas Jane plays in the Expanse series. I keep picturing him in the book as William Fickner. Um, oh, I see. Yeah. Which he's, he's such a, like, I really like him as, as a, as a character actor. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So I think that about, I mean, that about does it, right? Yeah. You got nothing else. Um, I want to say really quickly that, I just want to say a big, big thank you to all the podcasts that helped us out with the Oscar nominations episode. Yeah. Uh, showcase episode. That was fun. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I, I was so yeah, happy with, sure. with how, how that turned out. Um, just running down the list really quickly. Intermission podcast from movieguys.org. Uh, Poor Man's Process from superliminalfilms.com. Uh, Nerds Domain from nerdsdom.com. And also the episode uh, uh, that I had with Matt uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, the Nerds You're Looking For from nerds po- the nerdspodcast.com. Kate's Take from d20crit.com. Man Whore Podcast, which you can find on iTunes. Um, and uh, finally, Cinema Rolls Movie Podcast uh, from cinemarollspodcast.com. So thank you guys so much. It was it was so much fun having you guys on, and um, I'm, we're going to do it again next year. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, that's, that about does it then, I guess. Sure does. Yeah. Very cool. Thanks for listening, right. guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks. God damn, it was so f***ing good. Right. I was yeah. on the edge of my seat. Like the ending, I was on the edge of my seat. I was sweating. Yeah. Do you know... Isn't, isn't it so good? It's mm. really f***ing good. Do you know what we should do? What's that? We should record a podcast in which we talk about it. <laughs> so, Mike, listen to this. So, okay, in the early days of the podcast, episode two, we recorded it here at, at, at Tiny's house, right? Okay? Yeah. Yeah. It was it was like it was the first episode that we did where we were just we were on our own. We had borrow a borrowed mixer, our our borrowed equipment. First thing that we're just you know trying it out on our own. So this is the first time ever since then. This is episode ninety five, ninety six. Okay. First time that we're recording at Tiny's, and he doesn't set up in the in the same spot. We recorded here like five times. No, we didn't. Oh yeah, no, yeah, did we? we did. Really? Yeah. Don't you remember the hour we spent on oh, yeah. your laptop trying to get our two mic- our rock band mics to work in the oh, basement? Oh, yeah, that's right. We recorded up in my room at least twice. Huh. Well, maybe me. Maybe f- used rock band microphones. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> Held by shoes. <laughs> yes, that's right. Well, this is, the, this is the first time that we've recorded in your downstairs. That's not a euphemism. <laughs> yeah, we recorded in the dining room. 
That's the main. That's the first time since then. That, yeah, that we've first time since then. Yeah. yeah. All the other times that we've been here since there's so many were in your basement or on, upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. So this, yeah. The first time we recorded with Mike was downstairs in your basement. True. Yeah. That, that it was. Yep. And we were, we were sitting like 30 feet apart because the rock band microphones were so sensitive. That's right. Because <laughs> they're so good and strong. <laughs> Strong. Yeah. I'm about good. Uh, terrified every single time I nudged the shoe a little bit. <laughs> God. Those are the times. Because they're, so, they're so good and strong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> good joke. Uh, LOL. I don't, I don't get it. I don't really either, guys. Okay. Remember when it was just me and you, Tiny? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. JK. Oh my (laughs) As always, thank you for listening to the Obsessive Viewer Podcast. Thank you to Loud Life for providing our awesome opening theme music. Their first EP is called Mistakes We Must Make and features our theme song and Eclipse of Events. Please head over to iTunes and download their album. While you're there, make sure to give us a rate and a review. It helps us climb the podcast charts, and we really appreciate feedback. Speaking of feedback, please like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Viewer, and follow each of us on Twitter. You can find me, Tiny, at ObsessiveTiny, Matt is at ObsessiveViewer, and Mike is at IamMikeWhite. You can also check out the blog at ObsessiveViewer.com, where we, but mostly Matt, review movies, TV shows, and comment on the industry as a whole. While you're web surfing, please head over to our sister site, obsessivebooknerd.com, where we review books and comment on the ever-evolving world of reading. If you're philosophically curious, please go explore my side project, The Secular Perspective Podcast, which is a show that explores the concept of faith, religion, and existence from a secular perspective. If you have any thoughts on the podcast or suggestions for future episodes, you can also email us individually at matt, tiny, or mike at obsessiveviewer.com or email the podcast directly at podcast at obsessiveviewer.com. Thanks for joining us today, and please come back.